Good morning. It's Monday, May 8th, and I'm preparing today to brew a batch of Oktoberfest lager. I realize it's only May, but as this will be a lager beer, and I'd like it to lager for at least three months uh, to be ready in mid-September, got to get things going before the uh, May is out, so today will be the day. Um, my brew system does have one limitation on brewing smaller batches, as this will only be a five-gallon batch. The thermometer on my hot liquor tank is mounted rather high up on the kettle. Not, not very high, but I have to have a minimum of five gallons in there for things to register. Um, now, unfortunately, the amount of water I need for the mash for this five-gallon batch is only about three and a half gallons. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use my boil kettle as my hot liquor tank for my mash and put my mash, kettle, mash tun on the floor. With only approximately three and a half gallons and about 14, 16 pounds of grain in the kettle, I can go ahead and then lift it up to this level and proceed as normal. It'll also give me the opportunity to show you some more top-down looks with the camera uh, into the mash tun as the mash and sparge are going on. So we'll look, take a look at that today. Okay, well nothing terribly exciting here yet. As you can see, I'm heating up the water I need in my boil kettle. And sitting right below that is my mash tun, which I've taken down from its usual center stand right here between the boil kettle and the hot liquor tank. So I'm going to mash on the floor today, just for uh, the fact, as I mentioned, that the thermometer on my boil kettle is mounted a little bit high. As you can see, I've got to get at least about four and a half, five gallons in there before it'll register. And I only needed 3.12 gallons for my uh, mash today. And uh, sitting right in front of the boil kettle is here all, all the cracked grains I'm going to be needing for this batch. So I'm just waiting for the water in the hot liquor tank uh, slash boil kettle to come to temperature. And when that's ready, I'll go ahead and mount the camera above the mash tun so that you can see me uh, mash in, adding the grains and the water. So we'll be back with you in a few minutes. Okay, I'm preparing now to start my mash. You can see the mash tun is totally empty and I'm all set up to start flowing the water into it from the hot liquor tank. I like to get a little bit of water uh, into the mash tun before I start adding the grains. So there you can see it flowing in. And I'll go ahead and stick through you, uh, stick with you through this process so you can see me adding the grains and getting everything all mashed into the mash tun. Okay, it's starting to get a nice little bit of water there, so I'm going to grab and start adding my grains. Make sure we get them nice and evenly wet as I'm adding them here. About half. Okay, and we're shooting for a target temperature in our mash today of 154 degrees. We're going to hold our grains at that temperature once we get them all in there for one hour. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my grains here. So all the grains are in. Excuse me, we'll pull out of dust there. And just letting the rest of the water flow in from the hot liquor tank. Okay, I have almost all the water in now. Ok, 
can. And there's all the water from the hot liquor tank. So I'll turn off the spigot and get the hose out of the way here. Now an important thing is we need to grab our mash paddle and make sure the mash is all evenly distributed. We, want, uh, we don't want any dry spots. We want to make sure all our grain is mashing properly. And now I need to check and see where we're at temperature wise. So I've got my thermometer handy here. Let that sit in the mash for a second. Okay, we want about 154 degrees and it looks like we've hit that right on the mark. So I'm going to go ahead and get my mash paddle out of there and everything's all stirred up. And immediately get the lid on my mash tun to make sure it holds the temperature for the duration of the mash. Now this will be a 60 minute long mash. So we want to leave things in here for 60 minutes now. I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off now and get the mash tun up on the second level where it needs to be so I'm all set when things to go for the sparge and I'll start heating the water in the hot liquor tank for the sparge. Uh, so we'll be back with you when it's time to sparge this out and fill our boil kettle. Thanks. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes now. I'm going to go ahead and check our mash and see where we're at temperature wise and uh, go ahead and give it a quick stir. Okay, the temperature's dropped just a little bit below where we want it. So I have a little bit of boiling water here and I'm going to add just a little bit to try and up that mash temperature. So let me pull the thermometer a second and give it a stir. And let's see what that did for us on the temperature. Give it a few seconds to read. Okay, now we're right back in the range where I should be, and I've given the mash a good stir, so I'm going to put the lid back on and uh, wait for the mash to complete. And I'll be back with you when we're ready to start the sparge. Alright, and as you can see, we now have the sparge going. I have my sprinkler spraying on my grains, feeding out here from the hot liquor tank, and flowing straight out of here, down into the boil kettle. I'm keeping the lid on the boil kettle so I don't lose too much heat. And I usually start to heat up my boil kettle when I'm about halfway done with the sparge. Uh, so I need to shut off and keep monitoring this. Uh, so I'll be back with you when we start the boil. The sparge is now complete and now I'm just waiting for my wort to come to a boil. Sorry for the extra noise, that's just my propane burner. And sitting right to the left here are my hops for my first edition getting ready to add those as soon as the work comes to a boil here. Uh, so I'm going to get back to things and I'll be back with you when I'm ready to do the uh, first hop addition. Alright, we're just starting to come to a boil here and you can see we have all this foam on top. We have to get through something called the hot break. Um, I'm going to get a large foam head on top and then that's going to drop eventually but this is what makes things dangerous for me when I do my 10-gallon uh, batches, as I start with a boil volume of approximately 12 and a half gallons, but since this is only a 14-gallon kettle, you can see how much that head just rose, and this is only a 5-gallon batch, and you're seeing I'm having to turn down the heat significantly to get past this break period, and now the head will start to go back down. Now once you pass this hot break, that's when you can start adding your hops. So I just need a few more minutes here to get through this. And turn down the heat real low. Sometimes on my larger batches I have to kill the heat entirely uh, to kill this hot break so I don't have a boil over. Okay, and the foam's starting to go down now. You can, see, uh, you can start to see some of the wart there through the foam as I stir. Now we have a nice good rolling boil here going though. Okay, now that we've passed the hot break and we have a safe boil, I'll go ahead and do my first hop addition. 
breakfast, I'm going to start with some leaf hops. I have half leaf and half pellet hops for this batch. So here go all the leaves. And we save the other half for the last 20 minutes of the boil. My other hops for this batch are pellet hops, so I'm going to put in just half of those. And there we go. I'm going to give those one good stir. Now I've told you before that I like to use primarily leaf hops uh, just because they don't clog my system as much. But as long as I have some leaf hops in there, it's okay for me to use some pellet. Because when I go ahead and drain the boil kettle, the leaf hops kind of act as a filter and stop much of the pellet hops from going anywhere or trying to come out. Okay, so we got our boil going. I'm going to go ahead and get my lid back on. And I always leave it ajar just a bit so we don't have a boil over issues with that. And I'll go ahead and come back with you when we're ready for the second hop addition. We're now about 20 minutes from the end of the boil, and it's time for our uh, next hop addition. So we're going to go ahead and put those in now. I've been sitting right here ready to add. Here's the other half of my leaf hops, and right here's the other half of my pellet hops. We we'll go ahead and get, put those in there and give them a good stir. And now we've got about 20 minutes to the left of, uh, left in the boil, and about five minutes from the end of the boil, I'll be putting in my wort chiller uh, to get us down to temperature. So I'll come on back with you and I'm ready to add the wort chiller. It's now about five minutes before the end of the boil and I'm going to go ahead and open this up and add our wort chiller. The wort chiller doesn't have any cold water flowing through it yet. And I'm going to go ahead and get it in there for the last few minutes of the boil. Uh, let it settle. Okay, so here we go and this has already been cleaned and sanitized. Just immerse that right down into the boil. And go ahead and put our lid back on. So now just five more minutes till the end of the boil. And after that I just need to chill the wort to about uh, 42 degrees as quickly as possible. Now today it's 42 instead of the usual 68 because this is a lager we're making. On um, the lager yeast, um, they work at the colder temperatures. So in a few minutes I'll be turning off the heat, chilling this down as fast as I can and then I'll come back with you when I'm ready to transfer the wort into the fermenter. Okay, and here we are ready to fill our primary fermenter from our boil kettle, which has been cooled down to the proper fermentation temperature. So we pull the airlock out of there. Get our hose down in our fermentation vessel here, and away we go. Now I've tried to cool the wort using the wort chiller to 42 degrees. I should be able to verify that as the fermenter fills by the stick-on uh, thermometer I have on virtually all my fermenters. And I like to uh, wiggle the hose around a bit here and help aerate the wort as I fill the fermenter. It's about the only time during production of beer that you actually want to up the level of oxygen in your wort. Um, once the yeast has been added and you've oxygenated well, after that oxygen is your beer's enemy. Uh, you don't want any oxygen when you're racking the beer from one container to another, uh, or when you're trying to keg the beer or anything like that, adding extra oxygen give you a, an oxidized kind of flavor, an off flavor in the beer that is not desirable. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up this fermenter. Uh, I have my yeast ready to pitch. I had a starter going for a few days and ready to throw that in once this is full and then we'll be going ahead and getting it into the refrigerator. 